Hi everyone and welcome to our final session for a virtual Makeup Week India. Hopefully you've all enjoyed it. I know I certainly have for the um, little bit of time that I've been involved with them um, with helping you guys out and we've had some amazing sessions and I want to thank our main sponsor which is Makeup Studio. So thank you so much guys for your support with, with Virtual Makeup Week. Um, Today, we are going to finish on a high because we are staying in the UK. I'm obviously here in Manchester talking to you all. And we're going to be joined by Lan, who is in London very shortly. And she is going to be talking us through some global fashion trends. Now, Lan was at Fashion Week. She was backstage at Fashion Week in February in London. So she's going to give us all the gossip on that and let us know exactly what are going to be the main trends for autumn winter 2020. So we're just waiting for Lan to join us. If you've got any questions, please whiz them over to us so I can direct them over to Lan. If you've got any questions as well about the sessions that you've seen, either on Facebook or on Instagram, then do let us know because we are here for you. We're here to help support your education. We're here to help to help support your creativity. And although this time has been quite a difficult time for everyone, certainly within the um, creative industries, it's still important to keep your creativity flowing. So. Today I was put out of my comfort zone and I actually joined in on Facebook to create an updo with Seema and um, I don't think I did a very good job but you know what I really 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 enjoyed it. Now I'm a makeup artist, I'm not a hair and makeup artist, I'm a makeup artist but um, I, uh, I really 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 enjoyed the session that we did. So just waiting for Lan, I think um, Lan just sent us a request so that I can separate the screen and get you involved. Hi guys, um, hi Shilpa, hi makeup artist stars Shariha. Um, thank you so much for joining in guys. Have you all enjoyed the sessions that you've seen so far? I know I have. And what's been your highlight so far? Um, we've had quite a lot of education. We have had, um, obviously, hair, which was with Seema today. The rest has been makeup education. We've had Ojas, we've had Vipul, um, uh, Cherag as well. That was a really good session. I really enjoyed um, doing my sessions with Cherag and with Ojas. Um, hi... Aurora, uh, hi Anjali, um, ah, Ashe, Ashe, Ashea, Ashea, so sorry, Ashea, and Lan is joining us now. So, Lan, just send me a request, my darling, and then we can get you here to join us. I can split the screen. So, we're going to be talking about, um, how makeup and fashion are integral and also how um, and the process of creating looks to go with the fashion designer's vision and um, working as part of a team with hair and with makeup and with fashion and here's Lan. Hello. Hey. <laughs> how are you? I'm good thank you. I think I'm having trouble with my wi-fi so I'm hoping you can. Oh wow. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be everything will be fine. It'll be absolutely fine. And how so I'm terrified with these lives. <laughs> with the, the Wi Fi. <laughs> oh. How are you? I'm really good. I'm really good. Um so obviously this is really international because I'm in Manchester, you're in London, and it's going all over India right as we speak. I know. Hello India. <laughs> so you know lots of questions pop up for you live. Yeah well brilliant but just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your background in um in this crazy business of beauty okay so um i started probably about um 18 years ago perhaps but i fell into it so i wasn't the traditional route you know i was doing um fashion design oh ah, okay uh, in st martin's and it just so happened on the third year that i um, took up a job in a photographic studio and picked up makeup and 
I've been doing it ever since, but I had a big break with working with a photographer at the Fashion Week. So, you know, I was only 23 at the time, I think. And I went to Paris Couture Fashion Week. And it was amazing because I got to like be on the shows backstage in Dior, um, you know, Versace, Louis Vuitton, Chanel, like literally around all the icons. So that inspired me to basically want to do shows. But it took me about five to six years of just like working in the industry and um, working at schools and just doing random jobs before I decided to take it seriously. And then that's when, you know, the bubble started to happen and meet loads of other people. And just like every job led to another job. So, yeah. And is it the live work that you especially like doing fashion, doing the runway? Or do you like editorial as well? Oh, I love all of it. But the one thing that I love about Fashion Week is that it's, you, you can't hide you know, it's a good place to learn your skills, high minion skills, you know, become faster, more knowledgeable. You're always problem solving, you know, but also it's such a big buzz. You know, you do weeks of prep and then you go backstage and then there's hours and it's all gone in a few seconds, you know, <laughs> but it's just the buzz that you get from it. it it's, it's unbelievable. It's so good. But, you know, being on an editorial, you have more time. You yeah. know, but at the same time, the pressure is still quite high, especially in fashion, you know, because it's on your head, you know, as a whole team. If it doesn't look right, then, you know, someone's going to get it, <laughs> you well, know. We just had a lovely comment. Seema has said that she loves your book. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so that's gorgeous. So tell us about writing the book as well and creating the book. So I wrote, um, I'll just get the book for you. So I've got these two two books oh just yeah ever... there's two um can't see the bottom of them Lan. we can't oh. see yeah there we go fabulous oh, my God. so these are um it's two covers two different covers but it's the same book so it's all about art history it's basically me brain dumping where i get my knowledge from um in terms of experimentation inspiration mm -hmm. and it's trying to move people away from just um just looking at other makeupy things and just rehashing everything so yeah. maybe it's trying to push people to go and look at um the arts film theater music try and open up you know their design aspect of inspiration and then the new book which is that one Beautiful. the pro oh. makeup design yeah so this was relaunched just in october and it's got the smudge charts in there as well so gorgeous so the whole idea with this book yeah um is that it's editorial it's more beauty focus but also um you get to think about like how you're going to design a beauty shoot for a magazine you know like these are the type of looks that are sellable um yeah. if you're doing a fashion show you know all these elements of surprise and experimentation, they're all part of the design process. So this book is all about people getting into, like get back to mood boarding, pulling out the, the paints or whatever, and just get inspired and play with the materials. And you can use makeup to create all your illustrations. And it, because it becomes an artwork, you know, I've always created mood boards and things that are still, you know, it's not just a picture of someone else's makeup go, oh, I'm going to, Mm. create this you know it's always got to have an inspiration aspect and when the client's looking at it or the designer or you know when you're trying to share the brief you've got to try and capture the whole feeling of what you're designing so i think it's really important to have this process and how long did it take you to put the books together oh probably about three years start to finish good grief wow yeah but it was probably sitting in my mind for about six years or something because you when you're doing a book you have to research you have to make sure that you know when you're writing your hypnosis that no one else has done it or you know that people need it so mm. you know I made sure I did my research asked the schools asked other makeup artists you know do they feel like it's a necessity you know for people to use because that's how I'm feeling because a lot of people ask for my advice so mm -hmm. I thought by doing the book, yeah, it sort of saves people from hunting and it's just there. So it wasn't about money or anything or it was just about because I saw such a big demand for it. 
Yeah. And, you know, it seems that it is because, you know, I'm on my second print run and sold out of all my others. So in three years, That's which is unheard of yeah. for someone in publishing. So I'm really, really proud of that because, you know, I'm not a real author or I don't know anything about publishing, but now I do. But it's just goes to show, you know, like if people need it and your ideas are based on that, it could do well. So did you have almost like a ghostwriter to help with, with putting it together and, and getting the content, your, your vision? and your words into some sort of format in the book? Because I do a lot of design work and being like in charge of shows, um, I can be quite a control freak in that way. So um, I, and having experience in art as well, you, you always have to justify why you're doing something, but you do it visually. So I'm so used to, um, you know, when I studied at St. Martin's and I did Middlesex University and I did the arts, you know, you always have to create mood boards and, and um <clears throat> excuse me books and you know notepads and everything to justify why you're saying what you are or you have to prove you know there has to be a factual sort of journey to everything yeah. so for me i had to come up with everything first i wrote everything i literally stripped everything i researched everything wrote it all down and i must have done like two to three different mock-ups and then i gave it to a copywriter and then the copywriter then passed it on to the publisher and the publisher then re-edit it and copy it and you know they come back with loads of questions of you know like being the outsiders okay explain this why why have you said this and it really works you know it's really really good so you're basically dumping everything you know but it opens up the doors to learn so much more when people are asking questions so oh, the differences between your first book and this this new book so the first book is more history orientated you know it you know has images from the arts iconic eras um, it's like a build-up of all the history before you can do the editorial and fashion because fashion is not something you can just walk into and get, I'm a fashion maker, but it's, it, it just doesn't work like that. There has to be a story in every element. It has to be inspiration from something, some film, and it's about trending and just having really cool ideas. Um, even from the operas, you know, I did a lot of show work. I designed an opera show. I traveled the world doing shows, um, just one-off shows, like car shows, like random things where I had to design and tell a story. So I think it really helped with my design skills and creating like fashion because fashion is quite, it could be something like where you're just drawing a line on the face. Mm. You know, a normal person might look at it and go, what? But then you look at the clothes, you look at the storytelling, the model, the way it's lit it all makes sense as a whole, just by looking at that image, it's just beautiful. To get to that point, you really have to like, understand all the developments of beauty. So for me, it's like, yes, you could be creative, but you have to go right back to the skin, casting the model, eyebrow features, um, skin tone, freckles, you know, everything is such an important element in telling a story in fashion. And that's why when people think they can just get to fashion, it's not as easy because, you're known for your style and creation and being able to develop it within seconds. So tell us about the process then of working with a designer to the look. Say for example, the look that you created at Fashion Week in February in London. Mm -hmm. How does that whole process start? What's the actual beginning of it? So, um, I'm going to turn the comments off, Lance, so whatever you hold up, people can see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I will, we will turn them back <clears> on <throat> afterwards. So if you've got a question, don't worry, yeah. you can so first of all um you know doing shows is a really scary thing and i don't think <clears throat> the idea of it is great but actually when you're in it i don't know have you done shows Arnold? yeah it's one never again it's not my <laughs> my bag at all it's uh, i take my hat off to people that do shows but I you know I, I understand the buzz that you get from it's live and it's done because i'm an actor as well so and mm. i Right on the stage, and it's that adrenaline rush of you're creating, and it's you can never repeat it ever because it's completely live. So, I get your addiction energy, and you know, it's because I'm quite a calm person, but I'm very direct when it comes to shows. You know, yeah. I've got different personalities for different um jobs, you know, because you have to be a certain type of person for all these areas. I think that's why I know some people might stay in one field because they're more suited to it. Like, you know, if you're really bubbly and you make people feel at home more, maybe you're more um, suited to celebrities, you know, where it's about pampering and luxury and 
you know, or like show work. It's, it's like you've got to be quick. You've got to be problem solving. You've got to be proactive. You've got to have a drive in you and you definitely have to not be scared. So, you know, my experiences from assisting a photographer in the middle of the pits at Paris Couture Fashion Week, you know, probably um, took the fear right out of me because what I went through in those times, I was 23 years old. I was in the pit of maybe a thousand photographers. I was probably one of four girls, you know, in this pit and it was all male, male orientated, like Italians and everyone, you know, speaking all their language very aggressively, taking, trying to get the best shot. And there's me going, Hi Maria Carla. Hi Lila. Hi Alec. You know, hi, hi Eva. You know all these supermodels in that time, and everyone, all these you know big men that've been doing it for like ten years, look at me, go, young lady, who do you think you are? And I said, oh, Alec Wake just invited me to a birthday party, you know, and that was because I was so naive at that time. I was fearless, so I just went wherever the wind took me. So I got to watch everything backstage. I was amongst the celebrities. You know, I sat front row with the Hiltons, you know, I did so much like in New York and Paris and Milan. And I think all those experiences, I think, sort of leveled me up because because I was, I was in it and I wasn't working in it. I was familiar with the surroundings. So I wasn't afraid, I guess, because I knew all the photographers from the Vogue, from Elle, you know, all the top uh, magazines around the world. But also at the same time, I knew all the journalists and all the models. Um, and I think, you know, that never fazed me. Whereas now that I'm in it, I'm like, thank God for that experience. Because when you see all these photographers on you, you know, taking pictures, trying, trying to almost push you out of the way while you're doing your makeup, you know, you have to have the confidence. Um, excuse me, can you move out of the way or you're blocking my light? I can't work. You know, and when I see my assistants and, you know, they're sort of moving out the way for the photographer to give him a good shot. I'm like, what are you doing? You, have, you haven't got time to stand around and pose for your photos. You've got to do the makeup for the shot. The show's about to go on, yeah. you know. So it's, it's all these elements. And I think as a head artist, you have to be able to know all these are going to happen and protect your, your team, you know, to allow them to be able to do the work well. So, you know, that, I guess, has probably helped me. So then I can concentrate on being just a designer, having a great team, and trust them to do all the work for me while I sort of, go around protecting them you know so I'll just give you an example of um, I'm going to pull this up now so I worked with on off and this season just gone in February for, so we're talking about autumn winter yep um, so usually we're always ahead right so I'm just making sure can you hear me clearly yeah yes yeah perfect. brilliant okay um, let's just uh just make sure because i had it ready on the uh slides so i'm just going to make sure it's not frozen which oh there we go okay so this is just to show you first oh, don't know how you do this because you know on zoom you can always share but on things like this it's a bit harder isn't it i know i know that's the problem oh that my light hold on move that out the way is that better or not yeah we still see the yeah that's that's better we can see, we can see. okay so this is on off and usually it's a combined of five designers so this is me um looking after five designers exactly at the same time okay. oh, can't show you the passcode sorry <laughs> <laughs> uh, these lies i'll tell you is at london fashion week and um and with five designers just for the people at home yeah so the theme this year was um all power to the imagination okay so the designers that do on off are generally the ones that then make it to the on main schedule so this is all about supporting the next generation so yeah. that's why I love working with um, these guys because you just don't know where they're going to go and generally they just like become the next big thing. So this is Jan Diana, who was one of the designers, so you can see mm -hmm. the look. So this, um, you know, was when we did last season, he's, and what you find is with a lot of designers, they want to go OTT sometimes because they're, because they're new. They're just trying to make a statement. So they go hair, 
makeup, nails, clothes, everything, you know, and sometimes it's a bit too much. So with the journalists and, you know, people watching, it doesn't necessarily match up because it screams like you're trying too hard. So at Fashion Week, you have to be quite careful. So as a makeup designer, you know, as much as you want to give the designer exactly what they want, it has to be able to be um, used as a trend. It's got to be wearable or it's got to have something, you know, stripped back. Just like one focus rather than a whole, unless you're doing couture, you know, then anything goes. But when it comes to like launching new designers and helping them to elevate, it's got to have some sort of simplicity with character, you know, a coolness. So, um, so Jan's look last year was very full on red lips, wing black eyes, you know, it was full, like maleficent, you know. Yeah. And so the feedback this season for autumn winter was take it right down and let the, let the clothes sing, but we need to do something cool. So all we did was just do the two gems on the side, but it really worked with his collection. So, and having the hair, you know, with the whole alien look. Oh, yeah, we can see it really well now. Yeah. A gem on the inner corner of the eye, one at the outer corner of the eye. Yeah. Um, not really heavy on mascara there. There's hardly anything else. No, no, not at all. It was very natural. But, yeah. uh, you know, the, the brief was to keep it very editorial, but you have to do something. And, you know, they were sending me pictures of all diamonds around the face and all these lines and things and... The clothes are just so strong and reflective. So I thought, look, if we use black stones, they're reflective. So yeah. it should work with, you know, when they're walking down, they look like aliens, you know, which is what we wanted. So with the hair being quite a structured piece, it worked quite nicely. So, so I had to design that like two or three times. Uh, okay. So did he, the process was, did he send over the, um, the sketches of what he was doing or, or the samples? And then did he send over any kind of ideas that he had for hair and makeup vision or did you? Yeah. That? So what happens first is that designer will have an idea of what they want and they speak to their creative director. Yeah. And then they speak to the stylist and the stylist will come up with the story with them to try and make it um, under relatable. And then with that, they'll give some examples and put mood sports together from other shows, or it could be an icon or a celebrity. When they send that to me, that's when I know um, where they want to go in terms of getting a feeling of the brief of who their girl is. And then I go away and then I narrow it down into what I think is the beauty side of it. So they're just looking at trying to get the feeling of it. I'm stripping it back to just talking about makeup only and how to um, embellish their, their clothing, if you know what I mean, their image, and trying to find out who that muse is. For me, it's so important to know, like, what are they trying to sell in terms of that person? Who's going to be the one to wear? What type of, pers what type of person are they going to be if they're walking down that catwalk? Yeah. You know, and that for me is like, if there's any particular colors they want and if there's any things that they must have. So what I do is I tailor it down to the brows, to the skin, to the textures, to the brands, to, or if there's a brand sponsorship, then I work to their um, products and then I strip it back and decide, okay, how are we going to utilize their products and then mi mix it with other things like art, you know, create more creative stuff, which I'll show you in the later on, the other looks. So it's, um, so then once I pull a mood board together, I then send that back to them. Um, back in the old days, you'd always have to meet up. But now everything is so quick on digital and phones that we can just WhatsApp each other, have that conversation. And then we meet up when we're going to do the test. So then I bring myself, two artists. Um, everyone will be present. They'll probably set up a thing for a lookbook to do test shots. So then we try all different variations of everything that you could possibly imagine and then try with the clothes. So it's a very long process. For some... It's quite easy because I can pretty much read a designer and from having worked with them before, they may say, oh, well, we're going a bit different, but they always go back to the same style. Do you, yeah, <laughs> you know, like, or they, they have a, just an instinct of what they love. So I always look at the stylist and the designer and I know that it's a representative of them. So it's always like a key, um, a good way for me to troubleshoot before I've even started and things like, okay, they usually like a, a, an eyeliner or they're a lip person. So obviously they're going to ask for some sort of lip, you know, and then you sort of learn all their color palettes because with designers, they always have a reoccurring 
um, accent, don't they, for any brand. You know, when you think of Gucci, Prada, Burberry, you know, the colors straight away or the logos go into your mind. So for me, it's like, okay, um, that's a good way of understanding who they are. So this one was Iyano. So Iyano was quite a tricky one because every model had to be different. Okay. So um, it was all painterly. It was quite street, but also at the same time, it was a bit of 80s. It was, it had to match the, the clothes, you know, and sometimes designers have, the clothes are not ready. So they'll tell you like, okay, we have these few outfits, but we won't have everything until the daytime, the, yeah. on, on the day of the show. So you'll have to just um, guess it, if you like. Yeah. <laughs> um, so things like that, I usually leave um, until the day when, for me to do. So I make sure that the assistants have all got their models and then I sort of leave all the guesswork to myself because I know I can do it. Um, this look is 404 Studio. So this one was quite cool. It was based on the witching hour. So this was probably one of the hardest looks to create because it was about brows, but it had to be, had to give an element of evil without being too evil. Yeah. If that makes sense. You know, and colored brows. Again, the designer wanted to match the clothes. So, you know, at the same time, you know, we had to, again, we did, two different tests and then in the middle of the night they were like oh can you just do another test with certain color and just let me see what it looks like so you know you may be sleeping thinking you've got the the looks down and you've sort of prepped your team and then the designer can call you up and text you in the middle of the morning or any time and say change my mind i want to have something else so you know <laughs> this one was a cool one ah okay so with that you've got um almost slightly above the brow yeah so this was a, a broken british sort of style um yeah. like a broken doll but it had a 90s 20s feel and but it needed to be modern so we used um different color gold leaf so we had blue leaf gold leaf silver and red leaf and yeah. then the brows were um yeah the brows i just kept them broken you know just like a line right through them but it wasn't perfect you yeah. know and he said um, going under the chin that was um a headband yeah yeah that was a headband and then we've got zayfo it's like just so you get a whole view of everything so zayfo is like sport lux to me it's quite bright um beautiful skin with just an element of silver okay um very girly fresh and yeah so that's on off and then i had jury kelfar which was this one so this was, again, beautiful, but with freckles, flushed. It's quite, um, rough, isn't it? quite romantic, yeah. And it's all about going back to how we used to be, you know, quite girly, um, being natural. It's all about sustainability. So the products I had to use um, were by Revolution Pro. Um, it was all about being, everything about the whole show was natural. So Good. recycling stuff. And then finally, we have Milan Bratton. So this was beautiful show. Gorgeous. That lip colour is amazing. I love that lip colour. Kind of. That's from Shiseido. Yeah. Oh my god. Wow. Like. That's insane. But you know, like we used no powder really on this shoot uh, on the show, um, because we used all the latest um, Shiseido products, which were absolutely amazing. The concealers was just like milk on the skin. Uh, finally, um, this last show. Simon Mo. This was quite cute. Oh, nice. Again, a play on the 20s. Yeah, yeah. But then the lashes, you know, and again, it was quite animalistic. Again, yeah. quite young, young girl at the zoo, basically. <laughs> so you get all these stories from all these shows, you know, and it's, and then it, when it comes to trends, you know, you have to, it's your responsibility to try and give something new and fresh, but also at the same time, it's still, you know, generally it's an eye or a lip you know, from season to season, what you find is it, it's quite every, every season you, you get quite a lot of designers do either a lip story or an eye story. You know, it's quite rare to have everything going on at the same time because when it comes to selling or brands or for people to aspire to get those looks, you know, it's, it's all about being attainable as well. So what we do at the shows is just elevating everything. 
So with the autumn winter trends, you know, it's just like I just pulled a few here that I thought were quite useful. That's great. Yeah. So, so again, like you, quite yeah. a lot of texture there. It's a play with texture again, isn't it? You've got the metallic mm -hmm. eyes, um, a bold lip. Yeah. And nothing really matte. There's, there's still quite a lot of sheen on the skin. Yeah. I think... Um... I think where makeup is becoming more natural and more um, diverse, yeah. but also, you know, you're getting a lot of not um, the same type of models anymore. You know how we used to have the supermodel era, we had, you know, the young girl era, we had the Kate Moss era. We're not seeing that anymore. We're seeing like designers really um, look at diversity. You know, if they've made an outfit, if it doesn't quite look right on one model, then they'll find a model to suit it. So it's all about personality as well, which is quite nice. Because I think we saw some older uh, models, didn't we, on the catwalk. Yeah. And some celebrities as well. There's quite a lot of iconic people now walking the catwalk. So it's quite a diverse yeah. um, place at the minute. Um, Always, I think, with autumn, winter, you, you get a lot more drama, which I personally like anyway. I like yeah. that of added drama I think from an artist's perspective um, although we saw a little bit of the glitter placement for spring but then yeah that came into play with say Christopher Kane's show and um, yeah for autumn winter so they still added that little bit of glitter and sparkle in there yeah I always love glitter always I love it. but I'm, I'm trying to I'm a cruelty free artist and um and sustainability is really at the heart of what I'm trying to do and what I might. Mm -hmm. So trying to get a sustainable glitter that really pops is really hard. Um, there's, well, there's loads of biodegradable glitter. So I suppose that's the same, isn't it? So there's, um, I think there's like Disco Dust and there's quite a few brands that are doing them. Yeah, but sometimes um, you have to, quite... it has to, you can't wash it off yeah you have to take it off and then put it into your compost so yeah otherwise you would get into the shower and and get it off but then it's still going to go into the waterways it doesn't biodegrade but um it's still an amazing thing to have that play with light and yeah it's what we do isn't it we just play around with the face and bounce light around certain areas of the face to change the shape and to mold it I mean, I think that's such a good um, way of training yourself as a makeup artist, you know, um, is understanding the photography. You know, you don't have to be a photographer, but you do really need to know what light does what, you know. OK, you've got natural daylight, you know, that means, you know, the skin needs less, you know, it's a bit more raw. Yeah. Um, and then you've got, you know, you've got your ring lights again, that makes everything look beautiful, right? It's all like soft focus. Um, it's all even. Yeah. So the difference, again, for people to understand, you know, between fashion and commercial and editorial to portrait, you know, it's all the different lights that's happening around it, it determines what your makeup will look like. So I think it's really important to have that conversation when you're on a job to understand what light is happening, because obviously if you've got flashlight, it's yeah. quite high contrast. So the dark and the light is very severe, you know, um, your your gray tones are barely existent so if you've spent loads of time blending and doing all this incredible detail and the photographer's a flashlight it's just literally almost like black and white it's literally like whatever color you've got it's literally the tones you don't see the between colors so it's really interesting to see so when i'm working with a photographer like if i'm working with glitter i think a lot of people will love experiment with glitter but to light it properly you know, you've got to take down the light. It's a lot of it is about the the contrast and sharpness and saturation and having the black point of photography. You know, it's it's been no, knowing how to change because some people would would shoot it and they automatically think because it's glitter they need to shoot it with a lot more light. But actually, it's the opposite way because glitter gives out so much light. Um, your light needs to be darker in order to be seen. You know, so I think that's quite important. And so when you're working on, for example, a, a catwalk show, um, mm. will there be a lighting director there that you'll consult with as well? So you know exactly what kind of lighting the stage is going to have? Because I suppose on off we'll have the standard lighting throughout. It won't change it. 
Um, yeah, I mean, they do, they do change. They do check everything before, during the run-up. So generally, you know, you have an idea of the look that you're going to create. Yeah. But then um, they usually give, you know, an hour before the show for the models to have a run-through and they double-check everything. So they check the light and stuff like that. So all that light technician would have, they would have had all that conversation before and then they'd let me know. And then yeah. I would go and do a check with the model. When, once I've done my demo model and everyone's doing their work, I literally like take my model, get the checks from the designer, the creative director, the stylist, and then we go out front in the catwalk when there's no one around and we make them walk down the catwalk and double check to make sure that, you know, that it's going to look fine and photograph. And usually they have a house photographer or a few photographers that have arrived early. So they often do checks as well. So they would tell, they often tell me if it doesn't look right or if the model's too shiny, um, they'd usually give me the heads up of how it's lighting. And if it's not looking good, either I have to change the makeup or the lighting will change. Has that ever happened where you've had to change the makeup yeah. at the last minute? Yeah, because where we were doing so many different designers, they couldn't change the light. It was just like your simple light, but one of the looks wasn't um, making them look beautiful enough. You know, it was just making them look a bit sallow, you know, no life in them. So we had to pump up the skin and change the color tone, everything like that. Yeah. And are you finding that you're doing more stuff on the body as well? Or is it literally here? Or are you doing a lot more stuff, a lot more artistry? Um, for the skin on the, um, the body it really depends on the shows because i really do get a mixed bag of shows and so some i've done you know and previously i've done full body paint yeah so when i'm doing full body paint then i need to pull in all the body painters as extras for my team and then i'll do i'll always always make sure whatever the clothes is that we all, we have to cover our skin i mean with designer clothes, you always have to ask them if it's okay to wear body makeup because sometimes models have got bad circulation or, you know, they've got bumps or scars and they need to be covered because, you know, if they're walking down with a short skirt on. You just can't have any of these sort of imperfections showing sometimes. Um, it's just a matter of the taste of the designer. Sometimes the designer will like it, but generally I'll have to always moisturize um, and think about it. Sometimes we do painting on just maybe fingertips or hands if it's part of the look or the ears or down the neck, you know. So it is a mixture of, of everything. And what's your favourite um, makeup for the body, would you say, that is your go-to for a body makeup to, um, to help conceal and cover any kind of imperfections? Um, I tend to mix in... Um, like Mac face and body. Um, but if they're allergic, then I'd put in like maybe Bobby Brown or something that is a little bit thicker in consistency, but I'd mix it in with highlighters. So um, generally I'll show you. Um, generally I'd have like Egyptian magic mixed in with a bit of um, body cream of some sort, which has an element of highlight. So there's Egyptian magic. Um, sometimes Becca yeah. and Krylan, silver or pearl or um, generally silver because it makes it really illuminate. And then I've just <laughs> found, <laughs> I found your one and yours is like really nice because the fact that, you know, it goes on really quickly um, and has a beautiful shine and it doesn't smell, um, it's going to be quite handy. To oh, use backstage. Well, I don't think it because some are quite greasy, and that's the reason why yeah. I, I co-created this with uh, Buzzman Beauty, and um, it's called Pro Body Glow, the product. And um, I wanted to create something that gave that shine, so the skin would look amazing, but yet we wouldn't feel greasy, and they wouldn't feel greasy. And also, I've done quite a lot of um, shoots with lingerie and stuff, and you know. Mm. Some of those products can, if it marks lingerie, it can be. I know. <laughs> but with this, it, it's fine. It just dries down beautifully. So um, I'm, I'm really pleased with it. It's, it's taken a year and 50 formulations. Hopefully you are as well. So I'd love yeah. to put it land. And please well, please. that's the thing. That's why I know is that it's like I put it on and usually I'd have to go and run and get a piece of paper or a towel, you know, to go and dry it off. Or I just have to wipe it somewhere because it's, 
you know, sometimes the formulation is really greasy, but that has just literally dried within seconds. So, um, very good. Now I just have to mix it with makeup and see what happens. Exactly. Make my own concoction. Yeah. You know, so let me know. Um, so what are your favorite products then for the face, would you say, that, that you tend to use a lot of? I know you've done a lot with um, Revolution Pro, where you were the collaborator on their Ultimate Artist Palette. Have you got one yeah. to show us? Yeah. Ta -da. Amazing. And this is available, is this available online with Amazon? Can people... Yeah, worldwide, yeah. Amazon, yeah. there's loads of boutique uh, makeup shops. And what you can, it's, this one's quite well used because my little one goes into it. So it's got face, blush, and all the colors that you can pretty much create anything. And lips, you know, and the pigments, you can go on top of the lip stains as well. But it's all pure colors. So anything that you want to experiment, be creative, you know, you can use it. It's just so handy, but also it's very light and it's all natural as well. So. Perfect. Cool. it's I just can't... handy because once you've done your whole look you know you don't have to take a million products with you anymore you just take that and it just slots in your little bag and then you've got your brushes and you're good to go um generally what cost of that, do you know the, hmm? the cost do you know how much it costs the cost um on amazon is uh revelation on the website is selling it for half price right now seven pound fifty yeah, so I'm buying one. I'm literally getting one for every client. So they've got their own personal. So I don't, don't need to worry about hygiene. It's just there. Wow, that, that is amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. £7.50. I'll have to get one, definitely. And the saturation of colour is there as well. It's, yeah, you, you don't... Get onto your hands so we can see the colour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you find is with... Because I formulated these myself. Um, so, for example, um, aubergine. Ooh. Yeah. And what you find is no um, break off. Ooh. You know how sometimes when you pick up, I'll show you even with a brush, you know. Um... Because sometimes when you use, when people are watching with their fingers, they'll get more saturation of color. Yeah. If I pick up with a brush. So I'll... if I just use the brush there. Yeah. That's amazing. And you know, you can, you know, they all have a, a light sort of reflex. So it's not glitter, but there's a bit of a sheen. So when you apply it on the face, um, you won't have any break off. But also what you see is what you get. Oh, that's the. That's gorgeous. Blue. Um, but yeah, the colors, you know, I've. And you can wet them too. Um, oh, all of them suitable to be used wet. Yeah. And look, this is the ooh, UV. That's stunning. Um, yeah. So, you know, and my main thing when I first made this was like, I need to make sure that there's definitely a white and there's definitely um, a black. So, you know. And the white. black, is that a true black or is it? Um... Uh, yeah, it is literally. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Black. But and you can you see can... just a swipe. It doesn't like fall off. And you can use that as a look. Hmm? you could use it as an eyeliner as well the black. yeah a lot of people um when i've been doing actually in the lockdown i've been doing like one-to-ones with a lot of friends family and people that just have never time to sit down and do their makeup and they want to experiment with color so they bought the palette and i said okay if you if you have the palette i'll talk you through it and i've been doing these one-to-ones and a good way of people experiment with color is to do the eyeliner but i always say do like a cold pencil or a liquid or something and then put the color on top of it so then you've got a lovely halo and graduation but at the same time depth so it always looks looks um true to somebody's eye shape as well and color tone you know so it doesn't just look like oh i'm wearing bright color all of a sudden you know it's a bit more gradual and you've got to it's really get well. the neon shades in there as well That's yeah they're all uv um neon shades and the reason also why i did them was because i think with a new law is that uv pigments are more classified as more body paints you know arts and crafts rather than beauty yeah. so um a lot of the brands out there are uv are sort of the ingredients are changing so they can't um use them anymore so i found the the brightest colors i could find and build up um to almost make that uv so that's why i created it but also with the lip stains you know so um the lip stain for example. So the bottom two rows, are they all lips? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. they're like nude, 
pink, um, you know, and it's all for skin shades as well. They work across the whole tone spectrum of skin. Um, cause I get loads of people showing me their videos. So that's a lip that's orange red and you can build it up and you can mix them all obviously. Um, and by just tapping, you make yeah. it more intense and then you can put the UV colors on top. So if you want to go more pink, you tap the pink on top and then that becomes really velvety. You see, gives yeah. a lovely, um, velvety, long lasting. Cool. They're really nice and creepy. And then you've got the complexion in there as well, haven't you? So you've got um, some powders and you've got some blushes in there too. Yeah, the bronzers, yeah. yeah. And the secret, the main secret is that the, the pink blush that I've got in there, this lilac finish here. Yeah. Um, it's just from years and years of me doing makeup. When you put a blush on, for me, it's, it's always a three tone, three to four tones. You know, I have a, a cream blush or I have the main stain. Yeah. Then I'd have like um, the contour. Yeah. And then I'd have a bit of the highlight and then it'd be bronzer to blend it off into the skin or powder. But by having that lilac shade, which I've always done, I usually just sweep it across and it merges the whole thing together. It just makes it look like, you know, when you turn in, in different angles, it just gives you that beautiful facelift, you know, which is non not really detectable because you've got these tones all building up. It's not just one color, just like stretched out everywhere. I've put in those tones. So it lasts longer. It's set longer. It has more effect. When you take your pictures, you can see it. But when you're moving in the light, you know, you can really see a difference. And it just gives a freshness to the skin, no matter what tone you've got. I also love putting a little bit of blush over the eyelids. Yeah. You know, just whiz it over there as well. So just so it, it brings everything together, because again, as an artist, we're working 360, aren't we? We're working not just on a flat surface, we're working on an actual real face. So we've got to bring everything out. And, and I love that tip of using the lilac. Just yeah, it's just something when you, I often say it's more of like modernization. You know, it's, it's if you want that modern feel like an English rose feel, or, you know, if people are feeling a bit sallow, you know, like I'm really dark skin and I absolutely love having pink you know and you wouldn't necessarily think oh pink blush but when i go out i love having that flush and that lilac on top people stop me all the time when i'm at work like people are always saying what have you got on your your skin you know how have you done your cheekbones and it's because i just put that little bit of lilac on it just merges it to, together it just looks really nice it's just different i think yeah. because people are not used to doing it but when i do it when i do a full face makeup or a red carpet or someone going out it's always my little final piece of that and a bit of highlight and then i change it to maybe putting a bit of dewiness on top of it. Like maybe I'll tap oh. a bit of a glow or, you know what I love that's new. Um, I'm just gonna use a wipe there. Because I am a queen, no, not, not a queen, but you know when they say, you know, what's your most ultimate favorite product or what you always have to have is highlighter. You know, I absolutely love highlighters and I'm always, always testing with different highlighters and, um, I got sent these ones, which are, have you heard of nude sticks? No. Nude sticks I found when I was in America for a shoot one time. And I, I went into one of their hard stores and I came across a brand called nude sticks. And they were mainly, mainly um, nude lips, really beautiful velvety lip stains, really amazing. And they've come up with these new, I thought it was really nice. So you've got this lovely highlighter. Okay. Um, so I guess Pat McGrath has something similar, but she's yeah. got a highlighter and a contour stick. But nude sticks, they've got they put the brush and and this lovely um, brush as well. The brush, yeah, it's so beautiful. Oh, that's fat. So this is a highlight, and then you've got the foundation. So you know, oh. foundation. The, the brush. brush yeah so i think that's quite handy when you're using for your clients you know you just have that and that's their what their colors and that's it just keep all then it's all sealed and quite quite nippy isn't it that's that's really good and again as you said from a hygiene perspective that's great because you know it's theirs yeah and it's tiny tiny so that's perfect for me so i'm gonna like be matching all my clients and have that in i think and what it else just, 
are your go-to products, would you say? Um, your makeup, to, to stop it, obviously, um, going too shiny on, under the light. I mean, I use the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. Yeah, I've got that as well, yeah. But I tend to use primers a lot. Okay. Um, so my favourite go-to is the Pore Professional. Um, the Benefit. The Benefit one, yeah. I don't know where the one. Oh. I thought I had it. Oh, yeah. Hold on. I've got so many things. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sure I had it. But my little one, she likes to... Um, she calls my little makeup studio her play area. I, I love listening to her singing as you're creating. <laughs> you put She's always in and out. Always. always in and out. So funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I have these two in my kit. Okay. So yeah, but... the difference yeah. is I used to always use, this was the original one. Yes. So, have you tried it before? I have. I, I used to use it, and then obviously when I went free, I, I couldn't use it, unfortunately, back anymore. Ah, uh, okay. Um, I'm wondering what ones are cruelty free now. So, obviously, you've got a silicone base, yeah, and it gives you a lot of matte finish. So, I tend to use that a lot because it means then when it comes to using the makeup, you know, I'm then using a bit of moisturizer mixed in with my makeup or highlighter. And then when it comes to powdering, I just use a slight pressed powder or, um, you know, Max Prep and Prime. Okay. So they're, they're like my go-tos um, generally. Have you tried the Smashbox Primer? Yes. Okay. Um, I like the Smashbox Primer. Yeah. But I find sometimes um, it's more, um, it's a completely different feel. You know, it's more, um, it's more of a moisturizer and silicone base, you know, whereas the Pore Professional is... It's more like skin, so I tend to use it on men as well. It's brilliant. And then a bit of powder, sometimes not even foundation. Um, I avoid um, too much of cream-like primers mm. because I like to see instant results. So this one is quite a good one, the, the Guerlain. Oh, yes. Blurring. Yeah. yeah, so I tend to use that if I need um, pores sort of minimize it. So you know, where clients have got a bit of line, um, I tend to put that in because it sort of pulls the right in and hides all the pores and things instantly, which is quite good. So I tend to mix depending on my client's skin texture. So they're like really, really important to have. But at the same time, I tend to um, mix the highlighters in with it as well. So that's why, you know, with when Benefit came up with this one, they put... Um, a highlighter through it's got a bit more of a pink soft pink to it which is quite nice on asian skin but yeah what and else what are you seeing when it comes to uh, obviously with the autumn winter are we seeing a lot more neon shades coming through because you know there was a big push with neon coming into hair um hmm. are we seeing neon with autumn winter makeup trends well i'm certainly seeing a lot of people playing with their eyes more yeah. You know, because obviously they're wearing the mask now and stuff, you know, so it's a bit different. So there is a play, um, more brighter colours. I wouldn't say neon. Um, I think it's more like the pops of, you know, on their lips, you know, the, the lip tones and lip colours are becoming brighter and stronger and more more fun. You know, they're not just like their normal dark shades anymore. They are really like UV like I think people are starting to understand the use of the UV tones, you know, like with the, you know, like a, a, your classic lipstick, like Lady Danger, for example, you know, that has, to me, that has an underbase of a UV colour. And I think that's why a lot of people love it. And mixing that with your normal lipsticks, it's brilliant because it just gives you a pop, makes your teeth white. You know, I think you know, you're seeing a lot of, you know, washes of neon colours, like pinks and yellows and blues and things as washes, but not like full on scale um, tones. I don't think people ever get that confidence to wear those sort of colors. It's always your usual like cobalt blues, emerald greens, maybe yeah. with a bit of yellow and pink. Pink is usually quite a, a consistent color. And we also saw the, um, for autumn, winter, for the catwalk, 
people experimenting with mascaras, with coloured mascaras. So yeah. They would pink on the lashes. And even with the lineup, if they would have maybe a black line next to it or white. Next yeah. I love that. I like that mirroring an, an eyeliner. I know when I, I used to by myself back in the day, in the, in the 90s, and they did this amazing um, collection. And it was a black liner and then a white liquid liner right next to it. And they did the same with nails. So they had black, yeah. white tip, white with a black tip. It's just so classic. Yeah, I've done loads of um, looks like that previously um, at shows where, yeah, you've got the white and the black. And it's quite common. You know, um, it's quite... Um, because now people are into the lashes a lot more now. I think you can get away with the big coloured um, winged liners. And I think definitely that's making a big, a big comeback. Um, you know, coloured like golds, um, greens. Um, but also, yeah, by having all these mink lashes or the individuals now, people are experimenting, cutting them up, you know, all these influences and a lot of people now playing with them. It's really, I mean, I don't know any... Like a lot of my friends, they really love lashes now, which they never bothered before. But because it just makes such a big difference, I find the lashes are getting bolder, the eyeliner is getting bolder, everything's gone up a notch, you know, and it's got quite graphic and people are going for the winged look, which is quite nice. And mm. you're seeing, um, I think last season, there's a lot of brands with glitter, you know, glitter gels as well. Yes. You know, so a lot of people are starting to put like a little line of disco for their Saturday night out like, on top of their eyeliner. I always Which think for a line. Do you use Inglot? Have you tried Inglot? I like Inglot, yeah. They're yeah. quite good for the colour. It's a line um, with the glitter and it just it doesn't move at all. It really yeah. fits in place on the liner. I love that. What's your favourite mascara, Lan? Because <sighs> I'm always interested in what makeup artists use as a mascara. So I would usually, for my clients... Um, Again, it's not as simple, is it? Because you always have to have different finishes. You know, there's not one miracle one. But my one ultimate sort of miracle one, I guess, is the MAC. Oh, okay. Giga Black Lash. Um, is it? I'll put it there. This one. What's the wand like? What's the... So the wand is quite... Um... It's, it's a good... Oh, right. Okay. Good size, medium, it's quite firm, um, it coats every lash, it's quite easy and quick to work with, it doesn't clump. That's the one thing I can say about this one, is it doesn't clump, but it curls and lifts at the same time. So whatever you need to create, you get that, but if you want thick, thick, um, I usually use, do you know what's quite nice? Shiseido, have you tried Shiseido? Um, so this is the multi-dimension one, and it's got a metal tip. This one is a bit more creamy and wet texture. Okay, that's got a similar spoolie to the um, to the Too Faced one. The yeah, the Too Faced one right. is a lot bigger, which is why you get that like massive coating. Um, yeah. I think um, the Shiseido one is similar, but it's a little bit more less clumpy, shall I say? Um, because, you know, you, you get that thickness, you know, that instant thickness with the Too Faced one, which is still good. Um, and then I've got, I don't know about you, have you ever heard of fairy drops? No. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm um, so surprised one, by this brand. but uh, We've only got one minute left because ah! otherwise time's going to just get, we're going to get cut off because that's Look. the thing with, with Insta. Oh, yeah. Okay. Fairy oh, drops, a lot of clients love it because it curls, but it doesn't crumble and it doesn't smudge. So anyone with oily eyelids, fairy drops is pretty good. That's a yeah. good one. Lan, yeah. thank you so much, my darling, for your time. It's gone so quick. I know, and for helping us round up Make a Week India virtual. So um, it's been a joy to Thanks. talk to you. And guys, thank you so much for watching at home. And again, thank you to our sponsor, Makeup Studio. Lan, hopefully I'll get to meet you soon in person. Yes, definitely. I'd love to. Thank, thank you so much. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye. See you.
Westalón.